Blessed be. Welcome back to Nine Wands. I'm Akasha Rockland, and I wanted to talk today about moving through disappointment when we have those ebbs and flows in our life, and um, <clears throat> it feels so hard, you know, to just be in acceptance that something didn't work out the way we thought it was gonna and to not take that to a very dark place but to also not suppress those feelings so that's why I wanted to call it moving through disappointment instead of uh, avoiding being disappointed um, I'm not gonna get into the specifics but I had a situation recently where um, I had put a lot of energy towards manifesting something that I really wanted and desired and felt like um, it started to manifest, it started to grow, it started to show up. And then it just kind of evaporated. And it was hard. It was really hard to feel like I had put so much energy into something and then it didn't um, it didn't birth the way that I thought that it was going to and I felt like so hurt and I felt like why would the universe allow why would my guides allow something to um, feel like it was mine and then just kind of not be mine anymore and um, one of the things when I one of the things that I try to um, always maintain whenever I do some sort of prayer or um, calling forth of an intention that I'm setting in my life. I always try to say uh, at the end of whatever it is I've, I've, I've called into being, this or something better now manifests for me in order to make sure that I'm not, I'm not trying to know it all. I'm not trying to force the, 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 the isness the one with it all this, you know, the source of, of, of all to give me something that I want, even if it's not what's best for me. So I try to always say this or something better now manifests for me. And still, when this situation did not <clears throat> go as planned, it was as if I never even said that. I felt so bummed and so hurt and, um... Then my story started bubbling up. All that stuff that we suppress. Um, I'm not good enough. I'm I'm not worthy enough. I'm not, um, I don't deserve that thing. All of that stuff that ego tells us um, about ourselves that usually we're able to kind of ignore. <laughs> and then it's right on the surface and it's just like, um, trying to destroy us really and when I say ego I don't mean ego as in um, you know that part of yourself that is like look at me look at me I mean ego in the sense of the persona the personality that that we take on who somebody thinks that they are um, pinpointing when they're talking about me, Akasha. They're, they're, they're only able to touch the ego, um, the part of you that's projected forth as personality. Um, and the ego is always going to do everything it can to um, maintain the status quo, right? To keep you, the, the truth of who you are, from um, dismantling it. Because if it dies, it thinks that 
all of us is going to die. We're all just going to, all of our parts are just going to um, be pulled apart and, and, and dissipate into the universe. So the ego's job is to try to keep the body together, to keep the mind together, to keep all of those things functioning the way that it thinks it's supposed to function. And so sometimes it feeds us these stories. Sometimes it tells us stuff that is so just fucked up and wrong about who we are and um, that you know, you don't have that thing because you don't deserve it or you didn't work hard enough for it or you're not good enough at what it is that you want to be doing to have it or you would have it. Um, and it's just trying to maintain the status quo. But where you really reside, your deep truth is so far beyond any of that stuff. And so even if you don't get something that you feel that you are really worthy of or that you really want or does, that you've put all of this energy into creating and it doesn't birth the way that you think that it's going to. Um, let yourself move through that pain. Move through that mourning and that grief of, of not having it, of um, feeling disappointed. It's okay to feel disappointed. And that was the hardest thing for me to really come to. Um, and I spent about almost two weeks just feeling lost and sad and broken and really disappointed. And, um, today, um, I don't know when it's going to be that you're watching this, but I'm filming um, on August the 23rd. Um, it's a Tuesday. Um, today, I I was in so much resistance. And a good friend actually asked me when I told her, you know, that I was, I was feeling all of this disappointment. I was feeling all this hurt. And she said, um, are you in resistance or... Are you, um, I forget the word she used. Are you, are you an allowance or are you in resistance? And I was like, mm, well, <laughs> I'm in resistance, trying to be in allowance, but I know that I'm in resistance. Um, and so I went swimming today and I'm such a water baby. I, I really am. I think that all of the goddesses that I find myself really connected to tend to have something to do with water. Um, and so I went to the water, um, and it's always best if you can get to, uh, fresh water, if you could get to a river or to a lake or the ocean, if you could get to fresh water, bless you. Um, I could not do that today. So I went swimming. Um, I literally went to the gym, um, and it was eight something in the morning, maybe a uh, quarter to nine in the morning. And so there wasn't a lot of people in the pool and it was nice. I could really just swim. And um, I started to feel that resistance start to drain. I started to lose some of that, those walls that I had built up to feeling how really just sad I was and how unha like unhappy I really felt at, at the disappointment that I was having to hold. Um, and as I swam, I just started to uh, talk to the isness, the, uh, the isis, the isis. I just started to talk to um, the she. And I said, um, what am I supposed to do with all of this stuff, this, these shadows that are coming up and making me feel so unworthy and so un, um, unhinged? <laughs> like, what am I supposed to do with all this stuff? And what I heard was, 
comes a mantra. And it literally just felt like this soft little tugging at my heart, come to mantra, is what she said to me. And I started to um, chant the Kundalini mantra, which is, um, and on any, getting mo <laughs> any given moment I have, um, about three different mantras that are kind of cycling in my spirit and I don't always use them. That's the thing is like you can have all of these tools in your toolkit and then when something really erupts you're kind of going like what am I supposed to do? <laughs> and um, the, 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 the mother the, the womb she said to me uh, come to mantra and what what started to come out of me was my connection to the kundalini mantra which uh, the kundalini mantra is um it connects you with the the primordial um vital energy the prana of the body that is the coiled serpent at the root the base of the spine and as the kundalini um as that cobra straightens out um, it moves up through the chakras and brings you into deeper alignment with spirit and people have all kinds of beautiful experiences and really really powerful experiences and psychic experiences um, for me um, when I chant the kundalini mantra what I notice for myself is um, this quietness starts to come over me and I start to tap back into this space where I know that I am um, one with it all. Sorry. I don't need your help, Siri. <laughs> anyway, the mantra goes, um, Adi Shakti, Adi Shakti, Adi Shakti, Namo Namo. Sarab Shakti, Sarab Shakti, Sarab Shakti, Namo Namo. Pratham Bhagwati, Pratham Bhagwati, Pratham Bhagwati, Namo Namo, Kundalini Mata Shakti, Mata Shakti, Namo Namo. And it's basically saying, um, I bow to the primordial goddess, which is all life, from which all life sprang and to which all life returns. Um, and you're tapping into your own like power source there. And as I was doing the Kundalini mantra, just swimming, I noticed after a few minutes, it just dissolved into um, this beautiful um, synchronized breath and mantra that morphed into Satnam. 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 As I inhaled, Sat. And as I exhaled, Nam. And what Satnam is, um, is. Uh, truth I am Nam is uh, Sat is truth and Nam is I am or almost like the um the home I am the home of truth or truth I am um and when you really really get into mantra what happens is you stop doing the mantra and the mantra starts repeating you um and then it's really gets really really high you start to just kind of move into the space where you are witnessing your own coming back home to yourself, to your higher self, to who you truly are. And as I was swimming and synchronizing my breath and the mantra just naturally shifted to Sat Nam, this quiet calm just came over me and I no longer felt so attached to my story. I felt so much less broken by this idea that I wanted something that sort of came and then didn't come that um my whole life is a series of manifesting or calling things forth and then only getting to enjoy them for so long um that's such an old story and um all of these feelings of like am I worthy of what I want am I good enough for what I want can I really hold the thing that I'm asking for um, can I walk that path? Um, it just started to fall away and I was left with Satnam. Truth I am. Truth I am. 
truth I am. And um, just wanted to make this video to say that There is always going to be an ebb and a flow. The ocean meets your feet and then moves back into its source. And that's the way this life is designed. And the only thing you have control over is your thoughts. And when you don't, get exactly what it is you want. If you can move into that space where maybe the universe is far more intelligent than you know, and maybe there is some grand design that you can't even put your finger on and can't even understand if it was explained to you, it would probably just cause your brain to just like explode. The law of attraction is great, that if you get on the vibration of what it is that you want and you stay on that vibration, it has to show up. It doesn't say it has to stay. I'm really good at manifesting things that I want, but that doesn't mean that they're going to stay exactly the way they are and they're never going to change form and they're never going to morph in, in any of that. All we have control over is our thoughts. Before I made this video, I, I pulled a tarot card just to ask the universe, um, am I on the right path? Not just with this video, with this topic, but with what I felt like spirit was telling me to do. And the funny thing is, is the card that I pulled, it's backwards now, I'm so sorry, but I pulled the high priestess. And this is such a beautiful, beautiful card. Um, she sits between the pillars of um, black and white, night and day. And the beautiful pomegranates there that represent um, the underworld, birth and death and rebirth. And she's got that, the, the sign of uh, the triple goddess, the moon in her fullness and then the waxing and the waning moon on her crown. And you notice right at the bottom of her skirt where this other moon is, um, there's her, her gown becomes water. And I thought that was such a beautiful connection to me having that realization in, in the pool today that When you can be in the flow of what spirit actually has for you, even if you don't know exactly what it is, the high priestess is always available. Her wisdom is always available for you to tap into. She sits holding the Torah in her lap. So she's connected to mysticism and um, the deeper meanings the hidden truths, the things that we can't read about but can only experience, experiential knowledge. So I just wanted to share that, that disappointment is not the end. It's an opportunity to meet the shadows that hide behind getting your way. And you don't get your way. Who do you meet yourself as at the crossroads in the pool when you approach the the uh the gates of the high priestess who are you will she let you pass into the realm of rebirth where does she send you back back out with the uh the ebb to be ready to flow I will keep manifesting, and so will you. I will keep repealing all of this shadow stuff, and so will you. And may we meet again here. Blessed be. Namaste.
Have a great week.